into action, violently grabbed Pepper and threw him up against a car, hurting him, holding him by his collar with both arms and screaming, You fight, Pepper! You fucking fight! You hear me? I never want to hear that again! Fucking N-word! I was shocked by the sudden cruelty and stupid white pride. Pepper was meekly apologetic to his big brother, saying, Okay, okay, I'm s sorry. A short time after that, I was making eggs with Pepper at his apartment when one of the brothers walked by, and witnessing our cooking technique, said, Pepper, you idiot, that's how the N-words do it. The racist talk bummed me out, and I couldn't pretend it was okay. It's so hard when you know someone is sweet and beautiful inside, but they can't outrun the demons and ignorance of their family culture. It would have been a Herculean effort for him to travel through his pain and best the evils of his upbringing. I don't know if he ever did it. When I heard stuff like that, it sickened me. I thought of Dizzy Gillespie hugging me into his armpit and the cool jazz guys who hung around at my house. These were the people I really respected. Raul was a cholo with the most impossibly gorgeous cholita sister named Elena, who dated Thunderbird, a scary gangster dude. I'll never forget the fear I felt the day I threw a water balloon from the second floor of the Bancroft building to hit some regular kids, but accidentally hit Thunderbird. I knew I was dead. Word came that he was looking for me. I hid from him for days, until a week later, he and some of his homies caught up with me in the school hallway. There was no escape. I had disrespected him badly and knew he was the kind of guy who wouldn't think twice about using a knife. They cornered me up against the wall, swallowing me up in an impregnable semicircle. I froze like a deer in the headlights, anticipating the impending beatdown. Time stood still for an eternity as I shrunk under the heavy stare. I wished the lockers behind me would swallow me alive. In his perfectly pressed khakis and cozy-looking Pendleton, hair slicked back, Thunderbird took a long, thoughtful moment and then said, I know you didn't mean it. I know you're cool, homie, so it's all cool. Phew. A beautiful reprieve. Raoul proved to be less thoughtful than Thunderbird. He once embarrassed me terribly in front of Elena during a family dinner at his house, loudly declaring, I peeked over the bathroom stall and saw Mike peeing. He was playing with his balls. I think he was looking for pubes. He's got no pubes. Ah! <laughs> I blushed and shrank into my chair. It was true, too. I was late to the pube party. In seventh grade, when we started mandatory showers after P.E. class, I saw that the nerdiest kid in the whole grade, Eugene Trout, had a full-on bush. I did my best to hide my baldness for years, but was still pubeless in ninth grade. I thought, fucking Eugene Trout had a bushel of pubes in seventh grade. Not till tenth grade did mine sprout. Pubes or not, I spent many an hour thinking of Elena, but she was out of my ballpark. Raoul introduced me to my lowest high. We smoked angel dust, PCP, bong hits, and I've never been more out of it. We listened to Kiss's Detroit Rock City over and over, Raoul telling me you could hear the sound of an authentic car crash in the recording. He excitedly insisted it had caused real fatalities. We then tried to take the bus to a park a couple of miles away, but ended up utterly confused on the complete wrong side of town. Raoul was a bad egg. The kid showed no pretty colors. Angel dust is like smoking death. As you inhale this shit, you feel your brain cells dying in real time, important cellular stuff popping and fizzling. Your heart light is dimming, never to be quite as bright again. Even the most secure and worry-free person starts panicking over the bottomless void. It sends you numb and spiraling down a hopeless and never-ending vortex. I don't know the pleasure or benefits in that one. No joy, no doors opening, no nothing. Ran into Raoul on a bus a year or two after Bancroft, and he had gone all the way criminal, gang-style, talking about some nefarious robbery shit involving violence that he was up to. He was also telling me that I should always put cocaine on the tip of my cock before having sex. It was the best way to do it. Makes you fuck for hours. We were 15. Then there was Freddie Gold. His two older sisters were both friends with my sister at Hollywood High. Freddie was my first rich friend. When I went over to his house, I discovered an opulence previously unknown to me. A big spread up in the West Hollywood Hills, in the Bird Streets up above the Sunset Strip, including the...